All right, generally I don't like to jump into strategy too quickly, but I'm gonna go ahead and get into the strategy because that's what most people want to know. Most people want to know, how do I pick a stock? Now, there are two types of analyses that work, the technicals and the fundamentals. Fundamentals. Okay, some people use a combination of both. Um, others simply stick to one of these. It's up to you what you choose. Personally, I believe fundamentals are better for investments or for long-term trades on things or companies that have a lot of potential for growth. And I use technicals for more short-term trading. I'm going to show you a little bit of both. What we are talking about when we're looking at fundamentals is the financials of a company. We're looking for upcoming news, um, rumors. These are not always included in most traders' definitions of fundamentals, but they are very useful. Um, and you'll find that very successful traders are often looking into the news and the rumors, seeing who's buying the stock. So those are aspects that are important as well. For the technicals, there's so many different technicals you can look at. Um, oh, by the way, some people confuse this part of fundamentals with technicals, and that is ratios. And I'll show you that in a second. Let's go ahead and do that first. Let's look at some ratios. So one great place, here's why I'm using screen capture, I'm going to show you some very good free resources to do fundamental and technical analyses on stock so that you know um, the basics of the company before you get into a position or a trade. So the first place I like to look for, look at for a stock I'm deciding on investing in is Morningstar.com. You can put in whatever stock you want to. Why don't we just go ahead and put in, I don't know, we'll put in, oh, I guess it chose for us. What the hell's going on? Why don't, it's an ad. Okay, great. All right, so I'm, we're going to put in MMM, 3M company. They make those stick it notes. MMM um, takes a while to load, but you're going to see a lot of probably an overload of details about this company. First of all is the quote and the overview that gives you all of these numbers. Now I can't possibly show you all of the different ratios and aspects of the fundamentals of a stock, but I can show you some interesting aspects. The first is going to be the yield. The yield shows you the dividends that you're getting from the stock. Not every stock has dividends, but some stocks do. And if they have dividends, it means if you hold on to them for a long enough time, usually three months, you will get this percentage of what you invested on a certain date. So we can scroll down and look at those dates. If you see here, um, here's the cash dividends that are paid out. And the last time it was paid out was February 11th. The next time will be three months from then, so it's going to be um, May 11th. So on May 11th, you're going to get 2% of whatever the stock is at that moment. So let's say it's 158. Now you're getting that much back, and you still have the stock. So you've made $3 on an investment of $158, and you still have the stock. So if the stock grows, you can sell it and take a profit then. Okay, Yield is important. Some some investors only play dividend stocks and they just hold the stock forever and they ride the dividends and if the stock grows and that's good because the dividends grow as well right if this goes up to $200 you're getting 2% of $200 instead of $156 okay so that's the first thing you want to look at um some of these other ones down here are pretty important i'll say this is a decent outlook of how the current situation of investors are visualizing the future of the company. If it's a high number, if it's a number usually above one, but a lot of stock are above one, so I'm going to say, let's say it's above two. If it's a high number, then the outlook of this company is pretty good. People are willing to pay more for the company, even though the company is not making as much money as um, it would for the market price. So in other words, 
this is a value that's probably more expensive than you should pay for the stock, but people are willing to pay that type of money because they expect the stock to grow or because there's certain aspects of the stock that are good, such as the yield. Um, another thing you're going to look at is one good thing about Morningstar is you can look at the stocks and determine whether they are good comparative to their industry. Um, but we're not going to look at that today. We're just going to look at some basics. So here's the financials. Now the financials are going to tell you how the company is doing as a company. If it's making money, if it's losing money. What you want to look for is, this is not a great balance sheet, but this should be enough. So what you want to look for, I'll give you one key here. The annual increase in revenue should be high. So here we're looking at in 2012, the revenue for this company was, these are in millions, so it was $29 billion. 2013, it became $30 billion. This year, it's $31 billion. So obviously, this company is growing in revenue. But at the same time, you want to make sure that its liabilities are not growing as well. Liabilities are, we're going to look at total liabilities. Liabilities are how much the company owes. So if the liabilities are growing, then the company is owing money at the same time it's gaining money. Okay, So you want to make a comparison of the growth of the revenue with the growth of the liabilities to make sure that the company is actually, that's current liabilities, the company is actually growing in profit, not just in revenue. There's a lot of things you could look at in this balance sheet. I'm not going to show you everything. I'm going to leave that to another course to get into the details. Those are a few things most investors look at. And like I said before, you don't want to be like most investors you're going to want to find your own way of doing a fundamental analysis that makes sense for you and that has been proven by your own records to be successful in predicting the growth of a stock. For me, I really like to look into a stock's marketing. My background's in marketing, and if the stock is not doing a lot of direct marketing, if they're doing a lot of that branding type of marketing, I'm going to stay away from it, at least for a long-term investment. You can look at a lot of the details of how a company runs by Googling that company's S1 filing. So just type in the company uh, stock ticker, that's not very good, and type in S1, maybe if we type S1 filing. Usually you can get these okay, through the SEC, and it'll tell you pretty much everything about the company. And you can dig through that S1 filing to get info on how the company runs. So here we are. Is this it? This is obviously not MMM, but this is what an S1 form looks like. It gives you all the data. It gives you um, the dividend policy. It gives you how the business run, the management. It tells you who's running the company. You can look into the board of directors. Um, sometimes that's an important aspect. If you find the person running the company has a PhD but no business experience, you're probably not going to want a long-term investment in that company. Okay, So that's one thing you're to look at. So I'm going to give you three sources for, for both uh, fundamentals and technicals. So that is the fundamentals. We got MMM, or sorry, Morningstar for all of this basic data. And by the way, you can look at the company profile here. You can get some analyses here. Um, a lot of this stuff is paid, but a lot of it's free as well, so you're pretty good. And often, one good thing about this is if you have already looked at the fundamentals here through the overview, you are thinking maybe of investing in it. After looking at the overview, you've decided it's not your cup of tea. So what you do is you click on Industry Peers, and you've got a lot of similar stock to look through that uh, might be better than what you're looking at. And they're not always in the same market, so you might find some that are trading in Europe, trading in Japan, for example. Okay, So that's one place, Morningstar.com. Another is Googling the S1. You can find them on sec.gov. I always just Google it and I can usually get it. Type in the company name, you'll get it better. So 3M, for example, Co. I could probably get it that way. Yeah, there you go. S1 and S1A are basically the same. S1A is just updated. So you're going to want to get the newest one. Always go to search tools and 
um, do like the past year. Okay, that'll give you the best one. All right, so a third place to look for, and a lot of people will disagree with me here because there's a lot of bullshit that goes on here, is Yahoo message boards. And it's kind of weird because you don't know who is participating in Yahoo message boards, but I feel it's a great place as if you don't look at it as um, serious analysts discussing a stock, but if you look at it as um, a place to aggregate information and rumors, it's often a very useful source of information. Um, a lot of it's bullshit, but at the same time, you're going to get a lot of useful details. So these are the threads. You can dig through these. It usually takes me quite a while to do a fundamental analysis. Um, here's this guy saying, sell in May, go away. That's a very common phrase in trading and investing. Typically, you are going to experience a bear market, which means the market drops. The stock market as a whole drops in May. And that is a statistical fact. However, it's not so true in two types of years. One type of year is the year that ends with a five, like 2015. And another year is a year that it's prior to an election year, which is also, guess what, 2015. So here this guy says, so it may go away. He's using a majority rule that doesn't apply today because this may is in a very strong year. So this May, even though May historically is a bull market, if you look at the statistics in a way to where you um, divide it up into different years, you'll find that years that end with five and years that are years prior to an election year are strong years even in May. So this guy is going to sell his shares and you could probably buy shares. Now I'm not saying MMM is going to be a good company to invest in, but I'm saying this rule is a majority rule and a majority is a group of people who make the wrong decisions most of the time so you're going to want to be the opposite so may is a good time to actually buy stock especially this year um so anyway yes you can go to yahoo message boards just type in yahoo message boards and the stock ticker and you'll get a list of rumors people talking about the stock Often you'll get good tips on some news events that you can dig into in more reliable sources. So you might find on a message board that there are rumors about some guy um, in the board of directors um, selling all of his stock. You might look into that. If someone in the board of the directors share, sells all of his shares of stock, it means he has lost confidence in the company. And because he's very close to the company, you might want to do what he's doing. He's more informed than the majority of the investors. That is the fundamentals. I'm going to get to the technicals in the next video because I don't want these videos to be long. So let's do a quick review. Go to Morningstar.com for financials of the company. Um, for news and rumors, Yahoo Message Board is good, and for ratios, you can also go to Morningstar.com. And for everything else about the company, check the S1 filing that a company must create before going public with their company.